Welcome back to Sociology. Today we're going to look at ethics and methods of research study. Today we are going to look at the steps in the research process, and the next time we are going to look at the types of research, as well as the fun part, the ethics and issues when it comes to doing sociological research. So let's get started. First question to ask ourselves is how do we know something to be true? Whose knowledge is worth the most? So whose opinion is correct, right? Really, no one's opinion is correct, but if we think back to postmodernism, every experience is valid. No experience has more than the other. But there are a couple types of knowledge that we need to discuss. So there's authority, experience, cultural tradition, faith, media, and science. Authority. Some people are assumed to be knowledgeable simply because of their experience position. One's own experience or past experiences convince us certain things are to be true. Cultural, tradi cultural tradition is the wisdom of past generations being passed on and accepted as accurate by later ones. Faith is belief in something without scientific proof. Media has become a significant source of knowledge. We talked about that a little bit in our social institutions. Science is knowledge based on observable phenomena. So sociology should be science, right? Because um, it's not so much about whether it is or is not a science, but to the extent that it is pursued with scientific modes of inquiry. So really, the techniques used by sociologists range from those that meet the strictest standards to those that fall short. So just like any other hard science, when we are doing research, if we are not following strict standards and codes, then we are not going to be able to produce um, strong research and strong findings. So the research process we start thinking about sociology as a science. A lot of people still have some issues in thinking of sociology as a science because it is a soft science or it is hard to study society because of all of the variations within our society. But really, although studying society might be harder than studying the natural world, it is still a science because we still adhere to the scientific method, we still adhere to strict standards, we look for sociological patterns and not just individual experiences. So then we see the chronological steps in the research process. There are eight in total. We are going to go through all of them. Make sure to get your note cards out and have your brainstorming worksheet because you need to be able to apply this to your research project for this semester as well as it'll be on the test. So make sure we know it. So the first step in the research process is to state the problem. And we've already done that when we started looking at the, some various social issues within our class and what we want to look at for our semester project. So this is the um, where we're going to discuss the purpose of the study and to articulate clearly the problem under investigation and the concepts being studied. So we need to define the concepts being studied or illuminate them so that we can all be on the same page. We need to identify the variables that might influence our study and then bring those two together to create the operational definition, which is a measurable definition, right? So once we've identified all the concepts and all the variables, we put it together to make a definition or a hypothesis that we can measure. Next, we're going to review the literature, right? And this is where we attempt to find out as much as possible about the topic at hand so that we can be fully informed and that we can start from a place where we can move forward in our research rather than just recreating research that's already been done. Next step is to develop the hypothesis. We are going to look at qualitative and quantitative methods. So qualitative methods um, are more like ethnographic research or literary analysis, while quantitative look at numbers and statistics. We're going to look at what is being proposed we're going to create a hypothesis. What do we think is happening? What social institutions influence this? What social constructions influence this? We're going to look at independent and dependent variables, and then we're going to look at direct relationships and social patterns. Our next choice, our next step is to choose the research design. We're going to talk about that more in depth next time, but the next step is to choose the methodology. Is it going to be survey? Is it going to be observational, case studies, ethno ethnographies? secondary analysis, experimental design, triangulation studies, reliability and validity. So the fifth step is to collect our data. So now that we have decided what our issue is, how we're going to look at it, 
what variables we're going to control and what we're going to measure, we're going to need to choose a sample. So data analysis and interpretation. This is the sixth step. So we need to look at if there's any social patterns, if there's correlations, if there's content analysis, if there's a measurement of central tendency. We need to think about what, now that we have all of our data and our information, what am I finding? And then we're going to create a conclusion. So this is important because research must not only report on the findings, but also discuss what they imply. What are the importance of our findings? This is also where the researcher will tie their findings back to the theory from their literature review. We're going to make generalizations. We're going to make predictions as to why these particular findings from these, from our research, can be applicable to the larger society as a whole. And the next and final step is to pose new research questions. So it is important because one of the one of the main goals of scientific inquiry is to continually unravel the mysteries of our world and continue to explore and improve on all of these ideas that we have. Okay, so that is this video. We are going to look more into reliability, validity, sample groups, as well as research methods and ethics. See you next time.